Hi everyone, my name's Lydia and I've lived in this house with solar panels for the past five years. This is what it looks like right now outside our house. A really common question that we get about solar panels is what happens when it's covered with snow? In today's video, I want to share with you the few factors that affect solar output in the winter time. And then in the second half of this video, I'll show you the exact output that our solar panels have been making for this winter and the four winters past. So when we think about solar panel output in the winter, what are the factors that affect it? Well, there are five main things. The first one is the hours of daylight. So in winter, the days are shorter, obviously, and so the number of daylight hours are shorter compared to, say, at summer solstice. The daylight hours are much longer and you have that many more hours to produce solar energy. Here in Minnesota, the summer solstice compared to winter solstice is a total of six hours and 51 minutes difference in daylight. So all of that amount of time with solar output is a huge difference. The second factor affecting solar output is the sun angle. So during the summertime, the sunlight is a little bit more directly going onto the solar panel. And then in the winter time, it's a little bit more slanted, which results in less efficient solar output. Obviously, if you had a solar panel that can change angles with an adjustable arm, or if you designed your solar panels to angle for the winter sun, then your output could be higher. But for us, the most efficient thing to do was to put them on the roof and angle or roof pitch to match the summer daylight because that would be the most amount of daylight we can change into solar energy. The third piece of this puzzle, and the reason you are probably here, is snow cover. Now, a little bit of snow cover, like a light dusting, probably doesn't do as much as you think to limit solar output. The reason for that is because sunlight can still penetrate like a little bit of snow, and the snow crystals itself also have some level of reflection. So it doesn't really reduce it to zero unless it's like a really thick several inch of snow cover uh, on top of your solar panels. And the other thing to think about too with snow is that as snow is laying on the ground, it also reflects up some solar light. Just think about if you went skiing or snowboarding, you have to put sunglasses on because it's just so bright and there's a lot of reflection just from the ground. So that's another additional piece of solar light source that can come into play in the winter. With snow cover, it really depends on the temperatures and wind conditions to determine how long the snow will actually stay on the panels. So based on your angle of your solar panels and the wind, a lot of it can blow off or it can also melt and slide off. At the regional test center in Vermont, it was also found that the frameless panels allow snow to glide off a lot more easily and then thus exposing the panel again for solar production. The fourth factor to think about is sort of the cleaning aspect that comes with snow. So as the snow falls onto the panel and they get melted off or washed off, there is a little bit of cleaning effect because the dust particles would slide off with that. It's kind of like cleaning your windshield a little bit after a rain. And in theory, a cleaner solar panel can have more efficient solar energy output as well. Now, I suppose the same thing can happen with rain and all the other seasons. So I'm not sure this is a net benefit or net negative, but just something to think about. The fifth factor is that efficiency kind of changes with temperatures. Most solar panels are tested at 77 degrees Fahrenheit or 25 degrees Celsius. And when the temperatures are warmer, uh, over 90 degrees Fahrenheit on the panel itself, like not in the air, but on the panel, which generally has a slightly higher temperature than just ambient air, the panels actually run 10 to 25% less efficiently. Now on the opposite end of the spectrum, is it possible to be too cold? Like this efficiency or conductivity change to a significant effect when it's too cold. I wasn't able to find any data on whether solar panels become more or less efficient when the temperatures get too cold, and there doesn't seem to be a threshold for solar panels output. With all of those factors in mind, let's take a look at what solar production looks like in the winter for us. Let me orient you to this graph. On the x-axis is all the months of the year, and on the y-axis is the energy production, and all the different color bars are the different years that we have had solar panels. And the first thing you'll notice is that solar energy production is much higher in the summer, in June and July, versus in the winter in January and December. The second thing that can be gleaned from this graph is that in the winter time, there is some production of solar energy and it's not zero. 
and you can see that it varies throughout the years. And let's dive a little deeper into what this variation means. On average, January is worse than December for solar production. As a reminder, winter solstice is in December. And so December, by definition, has shorter daylight hours on average than January. However, despite this, January in Minnesota has the highest amount of snowfall. And so my deduction from looking at this comparison is that snowfall does play a significant role in reducing our energy output in the winter time, specifically making January less productive than December on average. Comparing solar energy production in the summer versus winter, winter can be roughly 20 to 30 percent of the peak output in summer, which is a really significant difference. The other thing I want to show you from our solar production app is the curve of energy production on like a typical winter day versus a typical summer day. So on this graph, the x-axis is the hours of the day, and then on the y-axis, that's the energy production in kilowatt hours. And on a typical winter day, solar production doesn't really even happen until about 8 o'clock, and then it ends by about 4 p.m. And at the peak, it is producing 4 kilowatt hours. Now compare this to a day, say, in July the energy production starts earlier uh, around six or seven and it goes till a lot later almost 8 p.m at the peak it is producing seven kilowatt hours so the area under the curve is much higher uh, reflecting overall a lot more energy produced i hope this real life example was helpful if you like the graphs feel free to smash the like button. This would help the YouTube algorithm figure out this is a good video and it would help it reach more viewers. So thank you for doing that. So knowing this information and knowing that snowfall can reduce your solar energy output, what do you need to do about it? Well, it's kind of optional. I have seen some people clean off their solar panels with like a long broom and, and it requires specific tools and techniques to make sure you're not damaging the panel itself. Because once it's damaged, that might be more detrimental to your output anyway. And for us, we just find it completely impractical to try to clean snow off of the roof. First of all, it's super cold and no one wants to be outside in negative 20 degree weather cleaning off snow. And two, generally it does melt off or blow off off at some point throughout the day and so there would be times when half the solar panels are still covered but you see that it's melting away and so this is a pro and con that you have to weigh on your own whether or not you want to chase that little bit of extra output in like the five hours of daylight that you do have so we don't really do anything about the snow and neither do our neighbors and then lastly if you're considering installation and you live in a colder climate is there anything that you need to be aware of the main thing to think about is the super heavy snow and how it weighs down your solar panel system this is something that your solar panel provider in the area can probably help you figure out but you got to make sure the mounting of the panels to the roof itself spreads out that weight evenly so that it's not on like specific pressure points so much so that it can damage the roof material Another consideration for these snowy climates is determining the optimal angle for your solar panel installation. I kind of touched upon it earlier in this video, but the more vertical it is, the easier the snow can slide off and melt off. But the more vertical it is, the more susceptible it is to wind. And so like the stability might be an issue. One way is to have like an adjustable arm. But then again, if you put that on the roof, how feasible it is or how aesthetically pleasing it is to have an adjustable solar panel. So all of those things are important to consider and again something that your local solar panel specialist can help you figure out. That's it for my experience with snow and solar panels. Comment below and let me know what your experience has been if you have solar panels and how it does in the winter time or if you're considering solar panels where are you located and how cold does it get? Leave me a comment below and say hi. If you enjoy videos on solar panels and passive homes, feel free to check out this playlist I made on building our house and our experience living in it. And subscribe for more content like this one and I will talk to you next time.